Hey, it's Monday night, and we've got Tara Strong with us. Hi. Boy, lots of cool stuff we're going to talk about with her and uh, more tech stuff later on. So stay tuned. We'll be right here with Tara Strong on VoiceOver Body Shop. Don't go away. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm a little lower. For and some I'm reason. George Whittem, and I'm a little taller. And I'll stop that. <laughs> and this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO BS. All Much right. Better. All right. Well, tonight, we've got a big time guest. Yes, we do. We're kicking we, off the year right. We, pr we promise the top guests in the business, and we bring them here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Tara Strong is going to be with us tonight, and we're going to talk about all sorts of stuff with her. She She's really been cool. keeping busy. She has. So yeah. let's introduce her by showing you the type of work she does. <laughs> Sorry, Sebastian. It, it is, is expressly, expressly forbidden, forbidden for you, you to, to be swimming, swimming beyond the safety of the seawall. Any the such sea swimming is a reckless disregard of the rules. Don't you know? Not now. He needs us. You weren't exactly honest with me either. It wasn't like that. I volunteered. It's okay, Gnark. There's only two of them. We'll take them easy. Call to Robin. We've got trouble. Robin, I think they're expecting us. I think he was talking about finding the Doom Patrol. Hi, Robbie Poo. Remember me? Kid. Oh, you do remember. Say goodbye to your friend. I'm six years old, and tap dancing is my favorite thing. Even if it's not good for my pacemaker. A real genius, that one. I am the most powerful, and... One of the most powerful. Let's welcome Tara Strong to Voice Over Body Shop. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you nice again. Nice to see you, been too. It's been a few weeks. Um, you're originally from Toronto. Mm -hmm. I'm from Buffalo. Wow. Yeah, so you had a, got the chance to watch Irv Weinstein say, where are your kids at, at 11 o'clock? But uh, so that's an inside buffalo. How mm -hmm. long have you been out here in L.A.? Since 94. 94. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what brought you out? You were, you were with Second City? I mean, you had quite a career before you even came out here. Tell us a little bit about Well, I yourself. knew that I wanted to be a singer, dancer, actress when I was about four or five years old. Mm -hmm. And my parents didn't really know much about the business when I was a kid. And I kept bugging them to get me an agent. And I would um, do little school plays and stuff. And then I finally got an agent when I was 13. And I booked my first on-camera show, which was a show with Mr. T called TNT. And uh, my first play, which was The Music Man. And my first mm. animated role, which was Hello Kitty. Mm. And um, I did over 30 animated series in Toronto, as well as uh, quite a bit of on-camera. I did Second City. And I did some 
um, musical theater and TV. I was on a sitcom for a while, and um, I always knew I wanted to come to California. But luckily, a lot of the um, American productions were filming there, so I wasn't just mm. someone getting off the plane going, hey, yeah. I want to be an actress. Yeah. So, You're uh, a grizzled veteran. When yeah, you yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> I just always knew I wanted to come and try. So I moved here in 94, and I didn't know that uh, voiceover would be my primary thing. And um, I still do some on camera, and I have a lot of fun with that. But uh, I've been very lucky because some people that don't have the voiceover stuff that only have on camera don't mm. necessarily know where the next paycheck is coming from. And when you're in that very tight knit group of voiceover stuff, it's like a nice, consistent career. So I feel very blessed. And also, the roles I've played have been such iconic roles. I don't know, like how many people get to say I played Batgirl and Harley and Raven and Timmy <laughs> Turner and Bubbles. Like I, it's like a horseshoe that I was born under. So <laughs> I feel really lucky. Luck favors the prepared, though. That's true. You worked really hard to get That's to true. that point. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you've you've been here since '94, and and you've gotten all these iconic roles. You must, and right now you're like the busiest lady here in Hollywood <laughs> when it comes to these things. I mean, are you? Is it like day after day after day, hour after hour, session after session, or? Yeah, I average between six and ten shows at a time. Wow. Um, and then they're always scheduled on certain days. So, for instance, today Monday, I have nine to one Ben Ten where I play Ben. And it's like a lot of me, except when he becomes different aliens and we have other amazing actors coming in. And then two to six is Unikitty, which is also me as the title role. So it's a long, long day for me. And then on the other days, I'm doing DC Superhero Girls. I'm doing some Harley stuff. I um, Teen Titans Go is on Fridays. Like everything is like, you know, scheduled in throughout the week so that I can make it all work. And I'm also doing an on-camera movie with Carlos Rocky this week. So, Fun uh, guy. Yeah, he's yeah. awesome. And by the way, we're taping this. On a Monday. Yeah. So everything you just heard her say she did today, she did that today and then came on here and is still able to talk. <laughs> That's pretty I amazing. I do that for you, George. That's, uh, I, think, I think we have to work that out. <laughs> no, it's pretty amazing. I mean, your, your instrument, it's like, a, it's like a bodybuilder or something. It's like a marathon runner. You've obviously built up an unbelievable instrument, yeah. being able to have that kind of you know, stamina. Well, and you have to. I always tell people when they say, like, how do you break in? Take as many acting classes as you can, singing classes, scene study, improv. Um, and it's all really important because it is. It's an instrument. It's a muscle. And you have to constantly keep using it. And, you know, improv helps you be able to create characters very quickly. Because often you're in the studio and they'll say, oh, can you just do this part or this part or that part? And you don't want to be nervous. You want to be ready to just jump in. And singing lessons helps you learn your range and how to build power in different places. And mm -hmm. all those little things go into your basket of tricks before you get into the studio. Because, like you said, you're prepared. And if you go in unprepared um you might not get a second chance yeah. and if you're nervous you cannot show that you're nervous you have to come off confident even if you're faking it and mm -hmm. so you have to really really be ready and i caution people like to give up their careers and say i really want to try voiceover without being super yeah. super ready is a mistake <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. you were you were talking about improv and i we, we we've talked to a lot of a lot of people on this show and they all talk about doing improv and some of them are better at it than others what do you think why do you think that improv is so important, especially for voiceovers? Well, improv is um, a unique side of acting training, and you really learn about creating characters and writing little sketches for yourself, and you learn to think really quickly on your feet. And In fact, when I was studying improv both in Toronto and in L.A., you'd find people from all walks of life. They're not just actors, people that wanted to be better at being, you know, bedside matter as a doctor or a ba bank teller or whatever it was to ha get their personalities up and be ready to respond to people. And so uh, it's such a great learning place for building all kinds of characters. You get to experiment with your voice and see all these um, different, you know, voices that you can create and where they're from and how they laugh and what they do. And, and animation is so much a part of improvisation. There's so often that they'll say, can you throw a little line in here or change this or do that? And if you're ready and you're you know how to just sort of go without thinking and just do things on your feet. It's such an amazing preparation for doing voiceover. Mm -hmm. So when you get cast as something, and apparently they say get Tara Strong an awful lot, uh, how how does that process work? I mean, you, your agent is pushing it for you, or they're like, no, we want we want Tara Strong. We know she can do this type of thing. How often? You know, you're, you've got all these roles. Is this just like coming, you know, from nowhere? Or do it's, you have to audition? At, at my them? stage, it's both. You know, yeah. often I'll get roles offered to me because of my career. Sometimes I'll have to audition for a part I've already had, which is that's like, the craziest thing. I hear it's that. It's so too. crazy, Bergen, and it's like <laughs> I've done Harley a thousand different ways. Y'all yeah. know that I can do it. Just, uh, but you know, the flip side of saying no is that maybe they'll get someone else and. 
even for Ben 10, for this version, I had to re-audition because it was new producers, new creative. And if you have an attitude about coming in again, you won't you won't get it. So it's smart to just keep going in because, like I said, there's often new people in there. But um, for the most part, I still have to audition. I audition in my home studio that George helped me build um, pretty much every day. And, you know, you get an audition, you get a drawing of the character, you get a character description, you get sometimes a show Bible and sides, which is a portion of the script. And then you, as the voice actor, has to try to think of how the writers and the producers would want that character to sound and then you play and i i like to do it myself because i've been doing it so mm -hmm. long and i like to make it really perfect and i'll sit in my studio sometimes for hours editing and sometimes you have to walk away from it and go okay that that's good yeah. Yeah, but yeah. i really like making sure that i'm really happy with it before i send it off do you get through a take pretty easily like are you able to flow through something and say yeah it's kind of works or does at this point you can blast through a take and really it depends. sometimes i'm like i love that first take yeah and then sometimes i'll do like three in a row of each line mm -hmm. and then listen back and i thought oh i really like that third one but then when i listen back i'm like oh i really like the first one or sometimes the second goes better with the fourth of take of that line or whatever so you it will is. comp you'll you'll comp together oh, all, all the time yeah mm -hmm. wow all okay uh our guest is tara strong maybe you recognize her but you certainly recognize your voice if you've got a question for it throw it in our chat room and uh Maybe you can get the chance to ask a question of her yourself here on VoiceOver Body Shop. What's the what's the most favorite role you've done? And you've done some great ones. I mean, I, Timmy Turner always is one of my favorites. Uh, not that I watch cartoons all the time, but my kid who's over here watched them all. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it was always fun to listen to them without even watching them because it would be on in the back seat mm -hmm, and right. it's like you could tell the <laughs> writing was good you could tell the acting was fabulous but what was what was your favorite what do you well think i was did have one? a ton of fun doing fairly odd pants sure it was did. such a great cast and when there's a great cast it becomes like a family like you're doing a play or a sitcom or anything else you really build a camaraderie with your actors and you um, learn how to play off each other and most voice actors are really gracious and giving and I love doing full cast records because if you hear an actor do a certain way you may respond a different way like mm -hmm. if someone says let's get out of here you might go okay you know right. to sort of mock them or play off them yeah yeah um so for in terms of like group records and having fun I had so much fun doing Fairly Odd Parents, Teen Titans, Powerpuff Girls we had so much fun um but I do always say the favorite role that I ever booked was The Mermaid 2 which you played yeah. um in fact I was just in my home in Toronto where I grew up and I still have the, the poster on my wall from the original Little Mermaid movie. I was such a big fan. <laughs> so to move here and then get to play her daughter, Whoa. I met Jody Benson and I burst into tears. She's like, are you okay? I was like, I've just loved you for so long. And then to sing in the studio with her was extraordinary. Whoa. I really could have yeah. died the next day. Yeah. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing. Oh, that's freaking awesome. Yeah. What, what are you working on right now? I mean, today you're doing Ben 10 and these other ones. But you say you have like 10 different series going on at the same time? Yeah, all the time. Wow. What, time. what what else are you working on that you can talk um about? bravest warriors there's a new dc superhero girls show that lauren faust created and i'm playing harley and batgirl and raven and a whole bunch of other people and sometimes we fight with ourselves all the time oh <laughs> how does that go I mean, yeah are, I mean, are you how do you do that do you like to try to play two roles like literally back to back or it's do you weird. like intercut? sometimes we do and then sometimes we we record one through and then record one through the next time do you it ever depends. get to make that de decision how yeah. it's going to be done? Yeah. yeah as the actor, yeah. you can say, I'd uh -huh. like to do these yeah. back to back. Right. Or sometimes they say it's easier for us to do different tracks. And okay. Do like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it kind of depends on the show. Like today I was doing Ben 10 with two other characters that were all in the same scene and I just did them back to back to back to back to back. Just mm -hmm. talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a busy late mm -hmm. uh, and you got kids mm -hmm. and you got dogs. And and you've and got bunnies. and and bunnies and a husband and, yeah. and, and all these fuzzy things. He's the most work. <laughs> um, how do you how do you mix it all together? I mean, if you're you're working like from when to when? I mean, is, uh, well, most most voiceovers between nine and six or nine and four, and it's been really a great career to have children because first of all, you work up till you deliver. I remember E.G. Daly went into labor during a rugrat session. I was like, can you go <laughs> to the hospital right now, please? Um, but you know, it doesn't matter what you look like in animation. So you really can just, you know, work. And then I used to bring my babies to the studio with a nanny and I'd go in and work and then come out and play with them. And now I'm Somewhere. usually done before they're home from school. So I get to be a mom after school, unless like right now I'm filming something for Carlos, it's been night shoots, but typically I'm home by bedtime and I get to really 
it's been such a blessing that I get to do you it all because be I love being mom yeah. and being hands on. I don't like missing anything. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, again, if you got a question for Tara Strong, throw it in the chat room. We want you guys to be able to talk to her. That's why we bring her here. It's the most important thing. We also have an audience who may actually like to ask questions That's true. as well. We do have a microphone in the room for that. So. Yeah. So we will get to that in just a couple of minutes. Um, you've worked with all the top people. I mean, you know, Tom Kenny and, you know, and uh, whenever we, whenever we mention these people, we mention Tom Kenny, who we'd love to get on this show again. He's been on with us before, but we'd love to get him on here in LA. Um, who's your favorite people to work with? Well, probably my Don't, don't one. disinclude anybody. So no, no, no. Yeah, no pressure. So, I, I will yeah. say don't like voiceover me. people are the kindest, sweetest, most giving. It's like when you do on camera, there's a lot of catty nonsense that you mm -hmm. don't really get typically in voiceover. It's the nicest people. And they're so talented every single day. I'm blown away by something someone does. Just today in a session, Gray was whistling like for whatever reason. And she could like do these crazy <laughs> singing whistling things i'm like i did not know you could do that so it's like every day i'm sort of surprised by something um my favorite to work with is Cree. she was actually on hello kitty with me when i was 13 uh, and she was wow. the bad cat and i was and i was kitty so we had so much fun together and i love working with eg and pam siegel was probably the only person i've ever been separated from in a session because we would laugh too hard together <laughs> but, um, you're like like two like second you're two. grade yeah. girls yeah. Like, yeah. they moved yeah. to yeah, different they, classrooms they literally had to separate us but i love kevin michael richardson mm -hmm. and i love i i, I couldn't if you asked me to pick a favorite it's it would be fair, it's like right. asking to pick your favorite kid yeah you yeah. know it's like <laughs> everyone's so great but not roger Craig Smith. i hate roger <laughs> <laughs> i had to see him today monday's really tough for me because he's in benton and unikitty so i'm like oh, oh my god and i was walking going like in my contract to not have him in the booth with me <laughs> But they keep bringing he's him in. Breath, he's just a terrible person, terrible actor. And he knows it. <laughs> you know what's funny is we he have this it. we have this running joke, right? At all sessions. And sometimes people online are like, is this this feud real? But it's so much fun to tease him. And because I'm so used to it, I do it all the time now. Like it's in my nature to just bash him when I see him. And I did it at like a new job where I'm on all the time, but he's not. Oh. And the they producer, must have been like, what the producers the are kind of looking at me like, oh my God, I'm totally kidding. Yeah, I love yeah. Roger. He's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we figured that. Yeah. <laughs> Want to be able to work tomorrow morning. And yeah. That sort of things happen. Well, we're going to take a little break. And if you've got questions for, again, throw them in the chat room. We've got an audience here. we got lots of people here. This is, now we have a couch in here. There's lots of room for everybody to sit. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tara Strong here on Voice Over Body Shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will start watching this I mustache for a minute. All right, you guys have questions? And we're back here on Voice Over Body Shop. Tara Strong is our guest, and we have an audience, and we're wondering if any of you guys have a question. It looks like Howie Hoffman has one there. <laughs> Grab the microphone. You guys have come all this way. I want these guys to. Okay. All right. Jacob has a question here first. Uh, well, you guys have... I, I don't. <laughs> I know Dylan. Dylan, Dylan, of course, has a question. Okay. Hey, so uh, you probably don't recognize what I'm holding here. Um, <laughs> it's a very obscure cartoon. It's not very well known. No. But uh, <laughs> nobody likes that show. No, nobody. Um, but uh, but I just want to say, uh, first off, uh, I love your work. Thank you know, you. I, I, you know, you did, you know, you have such an amazing amount of versatility, and you know, and the characters you play it are so endearing and you always bring so much life to them um i do want to ask in the case of my little pony obviously your 
you're uh, one of the only uh, American U- U.S. voice actors on that show, because like, because uh, they, because you know, you've got dual citizenship. So you know, so I just want to ask, but you know, the rest is like uh, Canadian Union actors, and I just want to ask, how, how do you, how do they make that work? How do you like? Do you record at a different time than they do, or like, or is it like, is it over Skype or something, or how how does it go about? Well, um, you know, the nice thing about voiceover is you really can be anywhere, and and you could what they call, um, you know, kind of phone in and and be on a, a session with them and phone patch in to to hear everybody. Um, for My Little Pony, I go back and forth to Vancouver sometimes to be with the cast, which I really love. We all love each other very much, but mostly I do record um, from LA, and I'm not with them on phone patch, so I don't get to hear what they do organically, mm. which is, it's a little sad, but I know them so well and I, I know kind of how they're going to read it. And also Twilight has like a hundred thousand lines an episode. So <laughs> <laughs> it would be really long sessions if we all were together all the time. So I, I'll typically go into a studio by myself and then I phone patch to the directors in Vancouver and I'll often bang out anywhere between three to like seven episodes at a time, just me by myself. So it's, it can be draining, but it's such a sweet show. Well, Lesson Zero uh, was your masterpiece. Yes, that's a big favorite for sure. Yes. <laughs> I got a question for George you. George has a um, question. When did the Comic-Con thing become, dare I say, mandatory? Like, when did that become, like, something you knew you had to make time and space in your life for that kind of appearance thing? When did that start Well, happening? I've been going to Comic-Con in San Diego as long as I've been here, like it's yeah. something that and you when always they started do. doing it. Right. You you uh, stepped right. You know, well, you I would there. go. You know, Comic Con in particular, you go on behalf of the studios, so right. you don't usually go to sign autographs and make money. You go to um, promote whatever shows you're working yeah. on. So you know, and typically the studios take such great care of you when you go down. They get you a ride or a hotel or whatever, mm-hmm. and you make an appearance at a panel and do some signings for them. And it's a very collaborative effort to promote the show. So I've been doing that for a long time. So all the other cons, yeah. um, and just so the audience knows, there is a con in a city somewhere every weekend of the year. So if <laughs> yeah. you want to go to a con, you could probably find one to go to. And yeah. It started a little slower for me. Like, I didn't realize how big it was. So when I first started, I was going here and there. And then you you realize how important it is to the fans to connect with them. And I love going so much and meeting them with them. I've had so many special memories meeting people who are so grateful for what we do. And, like, I hear all the time, thank you for my childhood. Or this show got me through my parents' divorce. Or this show yeah. got me through a depression. And, like, last year was one of the most emotional I met this girl and she was dressed as Raven. They often cosplay as my characters. And she was talking and talking and talking. And I looked over and I see her mom like crying. And actually people cry when they meet me a lot. And, um, (laughs) but this was like a different cry. So I went over to her and I'm like, are you okay? And she's like, my daughter is very autistic and she hasn't spoken in five years. And when she heard you were coming, she didn't stop talking. And I was like, oh, wow. Like that's heavy, you know, to hear these people say that you mean so much to them. So I've started going more to connect with these fans because you're nothing without your fans and they're so wonderful and it's like a really nice way to give back and um i make it a pretty fun weekend my very best friend roxy and i go and she assists me at con because i it's a weird thing about me i've never cared for money this is going to sound crazy but when i was doing rugrats people like oh you must have made so much money on rugrats i'm like i don't really know like the agent does this and they this person does that i don't know what do you mean you don't know i've and i grew up not having money and I mean, I wasn't like at poverty line, but we were not a well-off family. And I always knew that I'd be successful and I'd be fine. So I don't, it's not something that I stress about. Yeah. And when I go to cons, I don't like dealing with money. I give away so much free crap all the time, mm-hmm. especially if there's a sick kid or someone doesn't have money. And, you know, this past year I was doing a lot of stuff for um, candidates and saying, if you promise to vote, I'll give you a free autograph. So she handles all the money. She handles all the people. And I really just go for myself to connect with fans and have a great, great yeah. time. I know the one event I remember seeing you at, at that you invited me to come to was a fundraiser uh, event for, it was at a animal, a wild animal yeah. rescue. Do you, yeah. do you, I mean, I'm, I'm remembering, you may remember it. I mean, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you said, you got to come to this. Tom Kenny's going to be yeah, there. Yeah, you yeah. can meet Tom. Yeah. And that's how we got, by the way, Tom that's Kenny how we ended up sure. getting Tom oh, yeah. through. Tampa well, I love doing charitable work on Twitter. For me, it's like the number one place to do that. I've raised half a million dollars for kids with cancer, a couple hundred thousand for animal rescue. I did raise a lot of money last year for Democratic candidates and causes. Mm -hmm. And 
I also like to give back that way. I'll say, you know, donate $5 for a follow back or $25 for an autograph or 50 for a voicemail screenshot below. And I'll give like a link to whichever charity I'm working with. And just today, actually, I heard from a dad um, with a little girl who I met at a con who was with she was three years old with cancer mm -hmm. and my fans all raised money for her. And today she's a year cancer free. Oh, so it's like Whoa. so yeah. nice to do that. Yeah. And um, the Wildlife Learning Center is one of my causes that I've been yeah. donating to for a while. And it's a rescue zoo in California that only takes animals that have been um, purchased by ding dongs that shouldn't be buying right. exotic animals the or injured animals. Yeah. yeah. And so it's a beautiful, beautiful rescue zoo. And I, I love doing stuff for them and they they give back to me they'll often like bring baby animals to my house to look at the little treat i'm really crazy about animals so that's what it is. Yeah. jacob you got the uh, mic let me let me turn it on all right, probably a more obscure role but was that you in the uh, super mario cartoon as the coop as like two of the koopalings yeah that was one of my first jobs, my first early jobs being the super mario brothers that was fun you have a good ear yeah are, are, are oh, you yeah. still able to do those voices yeah i remember like you were kind of down here, right? <laughs> yeah, something like that. This is a volcano. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I remember there were two very cute little boy characters. Nowadays, I feel like you could easily play Princess Peach. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. There's a one from someone in the chat room. It says, can do 777. Do you have a special keep the voice supple and healthy kit? Do you, yeah. do you use any product or anything like that? Um, well, I've never smoked, mm -hmm. and I Good. try to avoid smokers. So, so, so toxic. Um, and if I'm not feeling well, I'll rest my voice. I do try to warm up um, in my car all the time. I still take singing lessons, so I'll warm up with my vocal coach's um, recordings on my phone now. And um, I like to bring a bunch of different drinks into the studio. I always have a water, but sometimes I'll have like a, I like sparkling drinks too. I'll have like a Zevia because mm -hmm. I don't like aspartame yeah. or a hot drink. And I, if you're not feeling well, tea with honey and lemon. Um, and if you're really not feeling well, don't go to work because the booth is a small space and it's really crazy when someone comes in coughing and sneezing and then everybody's wiped out for the week. Yeah, then you take so, everybody else out. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. And you know, whatever candy, it, everyone's so different too. Like whatever you like or feels good to your voice. Obviously, I'm a vegan, so I never have dairy. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, you just got it. It's your instrument, so you have to keep it um, in good health. Have you ever had any? Have you ever had any damage? Have you ever had no, a? I've no, I've been lucky. You've, been, you've kept it. <laughs> <laughs> you've kept it healthy. Yeah, that's really fantastic. Yeah. Um, what else does? Um... I do have a question. Oh, okay. I'll get Howie to Hoffman you. has a question. Oh, go for it. <laughs> go for it, sir. We're mm -hmm. ready. Mike is hot. Yes, um, I'd like to know since you have you have been accomplished and amazing amount of iconic roles um what is there left what do you really what, yeah what is it something that you've not done that you really by the time you're my age that you want to do um you know i performed in toronto's theater so i'd love to go to a broadway show that'd be really fun um and just keep working you know i, I worked with stan quite a bit um before he passed away and we did spider-man together we were so cute he liked he liked he liked me a lot he was always appropriate, but like adorable. Like he used to call me eye candy at cons and he's like, come sit with me. He was very sweet. And when we were doing Spider-Man, he'd be at the mic beside me. And he kept looking at me like, Stan, you can't look at Tara. You have to stay on mic. So they ended up putting him like across the studio from me. So he'd stay on mic while looking at me. But I said like, what's your secret? You know, he's in his nineties and he's yeah. doing great. And he said, never retire, do what you love and just keep working. Mm -hmm. And I love that so much. So I just love to keep, keep working and things that challenge me and things that excite me. I get excited for all kinds of things still. So more on camera, more voiceover and stuff and theater, theater. Yeah. You have thought of a one woman show? A lot of people ask me that. You know, it's funny. I, I always preferred improv to stand up because I, I personally like to share the stage. I don't really like to be by myself on stage. So maybe I would do like a, not a one woman, but maybe like a three or four people show. But <laughs> I don't know. Maybe one day I will. Do you ever log? Do you ever write down anecdotes that happen in your profession i should i and should I think I should yeah too. i know i yeah. should really start keeping a journal and putting down all the great the stories nickelodeon stories for you yeah i bet <laughs> yeah. i bet i know you do too yeah yeah have you ever thought about directing or producing have you ever had the chance to do that or is that like eh, i i directed a little bit at disney i was um casting for them a little bit and it was fun um i do prefer to act first of all when you're acting you know, if you've got a couple lines, you can be in and out. If right. you're directing, you're there the entire mm. time. So mm -hmm. it is more time consuming. Yeah. Um, but producing and writing, I do love to do. Um, and I've written a few scripts that have been in development, a few things that have been on the air. Uh, and I definitely want to do more of that. That's fun. Yeah. All right. We got any other questions from our 
vast audience out there. No, I think we can. I think we can let Tara go home to her family, which would be yeah, a really and nice her dogs idea. And her bunnies. Yeah. 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 Uh, Seventeen and fourteen. Two boys. They're pretty proud of me. They like finding what? stuff that I'm not, Shit. you know, typically on. Like they like Rick and Morty or Family Guy or yeah. you What's know some of the like? games I do. They're like, "Mommy, I just killed everyone as you. I was Harley and Justice or whatever." I just singled all of your characters yeah. out. And yeah, they, them they know how to find me. They know how to find me. <laughs> are any are any of your kids following in any way your footsteps, or are they are they? They're it's super totally duper different. talented. My older son is an extraordinary musician. Um, he's not as showy as I am. Like mm -hmm. he doesn't really have the desire to be famous. And no. my younger one did do some acting when he he was little, but he didn't like missing school. Oh. So I'm not pushing it because I feel like the yeah. kids that get messed up out here are the ones that get pushed. Yeah. They yeah. could, they could, yeah. but yeah. I'm definitely gonna let them find their own path. Yeah. Did you ever work with my friend Fred Newman? I don't know. I don't he's know. He's the sound effects person that was on Prairie Home Companion and now hmm. uh, NPR. But. Oh. Maybe. But I'm terrible I, with I names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> that, was that you as the giant armed Frankenstein lady in Hotel Transylvania 3? Possibly. I did a, <laughs> I did a, bun I did a bunch of extra voices on, on the Transylvania movie, so that's quite possible. Yeah. It's a question there from Get Fred's Voice. He's asking about uh, coaches right at oh, the bottom there. Do you still get coaches? Yeah. Are you still getting coaching? How many coaches have you worked with, if you have or are? Uh, I, so I'm currently working with a vocal coach, a singing mm -hmm. teacher. She's amazing. Um, but I don't do any acting classes or mm -hmm. other kinds of classes right now. I'm just really busy. Not that well, I'm opposed yeah, to it, time? but yeah. I think it's good to keep training. I think just to, to assume that you're done learning is, yeah. is ignorant. And I think we all have a lot to learn. So, and conversely, have you done any coaching and are you going to do that? Do you think it's, I, I like to coach friends and friends yeah. to kids, but I don't like to do it. For money, I don't know. I have a weird thing with money. I don't, I'd rather pass it off to people that are that are coaching for money, and mm -hmm. I have a lot of great friends that um, ask all the time, so I just pass them off to them. Very cool. All righty, Tara, thank you so thank much you. for Thanks being for here. Having me. All righty. Well, George and I will be right back to say goodbye, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there in the trenches doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. All right, why don't we just... Yeah. Okay. Well, so, that's all for tonight. Dan, yeah. I'm going to see you tomorrow for a special... Yeah, we're gonna, I've got stuff to do. Mm -hmm. So thanks for joining us for the live broadcast tonight. And uh, we're going to be doing all sorts of cool stuff now with... Uh, you know, you're going to get to watch this interview all week long. And then next week, you'll get to watch the tech stuff we did tonight. So, uh, thanks for being here live, guys. We appreciate, we appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. Have a good week. We'll see you next, uh, the 21st with Larry Davis. All righty. Take care, guys. Good night. screen and be on mic at the same time. So that's put it on here. Can we put it down? Oh yeah, of course. Read Dan's screen. I just need to have the emails up with the, I need to put the uh, names of the donors in. So for tonight I'm just gonna be just, off just I'm just gonna head. talk off camera. Big deal. No, okay. Talk off mic a little bit. You can still hear me. <sighs> or put them over here so you're talking closer this way as opposed to that way. Yeah, that'll help. Get rid of Zoom. <sighs> okay. Ready to rock. Okay. All right.
Are we ready? Yeah. Yep. We're oh, we're rolling. Oh. Okay. Oh, in that case. Wow. Now, that was a great show. Yeah, I'm great, so glad we could get them in. Great, great interviews, and and we have a great time doing this. This new format's going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. We'll see how it goes. Working out the kinks tonight. Yeah. Live on the air. <laughs> That's the, <laughs> the way it goes. Uh, next week on this show, we'll show you the tech segment. Mm-hmm. And then on January 21st, 2019 rolls by, just like that. Uh, we will uh, bring Larry Davis in here. Fantastic. A funny guy. He's just like John Bailey, just a great uh, mimic and amazing improviser. And a great improviser yeah. and, a, and a fun guy. We're looking forward to that. Yeah. Who are our donors of the week? Donors of the week. We've got a lot of those familiar names because they subscribe, like Cherry C. H. Reynolds. We've got, uh, why are these all in the donors area? Sorry about that. Okay. And you, Andrew Kaufman, Karen. Cunningham, yeah, Karen, Karen O'Brien. Karen O'Brien um, we've got coming down the list here, Don Griffith. Thank you, Don. He's a subscriber. Martha Kahn. Martha. Shana, Shana Pennington Baird, which we now know the same name. How to say her name <laughs> since she's been on the show. Uh, good old Uncle Roy from Antland Productions. Joseph Valtanetti. Thank you, Joseph. Diana Bertzel. Uh, Stephanie Sutherland. And to round it out, Patty Gibbons. Brian Page. We're pretty much reading everybody's everybody's that's donated in the last month because well we haven't been on in almost a month. Uh Amanda Fellows and George Whittem Sr. My dad, <laughs> George Whittem Sr., who every time I see him says, I can't figure out how to cancel my donations. Darn. <laughs> well. <laughs> anyway, thanks everybody. We really appreciate your supporting us along the way. It's been great. Absolutely. Hey, you know, we we've, we've got the, the VOBS living room here, but if you'd like to show us your booth. Show us your booths. Yeah, we want your booth back here. Absolutely. Uh, and send it to us in landscape, not portrait. Right, landscape. Uh, show us what your studio is like. What if you what you put into it? And we'll be in front of it, which would be really cool. Mm-hmm. Send them to the guys at VOBS.tv, mm-hmm. and we'll be happy to get it on here. Uh, if you need help with your home studio, you can talk to... George at georgethetech.com. That's where you can find me. And Dan is available over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Get over there. Well, we can help you. We know what's going on. Uh, we're now on at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 Eastern, and whatever time it is in Newfoundland. Uh, <laughs> doing it an hour early so you guys on the East Coast can uh, have a little bit more time with your families. Right. That sort of thing. And, uh, but if you'd like to be in the studio here at five o'clock on a, an alternate Monday, we're going to be on every other Monday now, mm-hmm. uh, let us know if you're going to be in town or if you're here in LA and write to us again at the guys at VOBS.TV and put in the subject line audience. Mm-hmm. And that will allow us to know that you're going to be here. As you saw, we have a bit, quite a bit more room now for folks to be in here. It's Absolutely. very comfortable. So come more. on in. Absolutely. Well, we'd like to thank our sponsors, of course, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VO to go uh, VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. Um, all still sponsoring the show in 2019. Thank absolutely. You, everybody. They, they know where the good stuff is. Absolutely. As do you guys. Uh, of course, we'd like to thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of live webcasting. Our producer, Catherine Curtin, for getting us Tara Strong and all these great guests yeah. we've got lined up. Jack Daniel on chat room duty and on YouTube. And our amazing technical director who did an amazing job tonight. Oh. We're not worthy. Sue Merlino. And, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, guys, you know, it's all about how good you sound. And that's mostly because you sound the way you are. And that's the most important thing. But if it sounds right. It is good. That's right. And it sounds right. And you're right. I'm right. That's right. Anyway, (laughs) that's going to do it for us tonight on Voice Over Body Shop. We'll see you on the 21st with Larry Davis. And uh, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is Voice Over Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Take care, guys. Good night, everybody. Thanks. I like having the logo in the back. That was cool. Nice touch. Yeah.